No, you're making the, 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 the key point here, which is everything but AI was weaker at ASML, but AI right. was but strong, was and yet NVIDIA and AMD, amongst others, were down sharply. Yeah, um, and it was just kind of wrong. I mean, things, you know, people got it wrong. Now, I want to tell you, just well, as they were blowing up, and when I say blow up, I mean, not since, I don't know, like, like the, since they gave away mm-hmm. uh, Manhattan, what, for like 27 shekels? What was that they gave away when they had 20, the Dutch? $22. Yeah, right? I believe. Peter Stuyvesant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, great man. Uh, Holland Tunnel. Um, but no, that was Holland. But what, yeah. Well, I know that's actually it's related to my, my family. Um, but right when ASMLF. What, what the reaction was going, uh, you know, putting NVIDIA in its place, so to speak. What, Jensen Wong was speaking right then. And his quote is, we would like to achieve superhuman productivity. This is at a Lenovo Smarter AI Enterprise Conference. And I thought it ironic that here he's, you know, he's busy taking over the world, but he's also being taken down by ASMLF. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. No. I mean, how was uh, how Samsung doing? Um, Stacy Raskin, who is the, I think the sort of the very good, the terrible treasure. Yeah. Terrible. Okay. Uh, ASML is not necessarily the best read across. So the rest of the semi cax base, given their focus expertise and lumpy revenue profile, obviously also goes on to say, Nvidia, uh, Broadcom, AMD, all bro- uh, broadly sold off in a move that's potentially overdone. Thank you. Look, no, he's good. I guess he's owned by no one. Look, I think Chuck, Chuck has done a great job. I, if we dig in the archives, you'll see a picture of Chuck walking with Jensen. And you know what that means. Upside. Upside, is that what that means? Yeah. Jensen yeah. is everywhere. He is. He's, is there anyone asked, he won't speak to? Well, what I asked him, that? I said, aren't you too many places? Is it hard? Is it this yeah. or is that? He said, I'm not an actor. What does that mean? Because he's he's living what he does. He gets up at 4 a.m., he works for four hours, and then he goes in and meets people and find out what to do, and he goes find out what's the best stuff to do, and this super AI thing he was talking about yesterday was brilliant. At the Lenovo speech that he gave, it was brilliant. But, I mean, the day before that, the podcast, this podcast, that one, he showed up at the NASDAQ, he's there next to Becky suddenly. I mean, the man is everywhere. David, you're... You're falling prey. Is there a simulation of him? But he doesn't realize this is the... Agent Jensen. Does Jensen have like three Jensen? Let me get Mike Connie on the phone because he's very good on the agent. Who? Oh, oh the, Chuck likes the Falcons. Falcons do look good for it too. <laughs> yes, Falcons and look I, good. And I've got the- What's a worse outcome for the markets? Godzilla trampling through lower Manhattan or NVIDIA posting some kind of surprise big miss or guidance cut? Because if NVIDIA were to miss. I don't know if I would agree with it's not going to matter that much or for a, a long, you know. So, like I said on Monday, you know, Jensen Wong, the CEO of NVIDIA, yep. is uh, almost as overexposed as Snoop Dogg. So he's yeah. put himself <laughs> out there so much Impossible. talking about how great things are so much. I'd say he'd be pretty foolish to have that kind of visibility with those kind of statements in advance of a miss. I don't think he's foolish. So I do think they deliver. Now, do they deliver with the whisper number? That That's a tough one to say because they're, the, the expectations just keep going higher and higher as we're seeing with Netflix. Um, so I do think that if they come in and miss the whisper number, yeah, you'll see that knee-jerk reaction down. People yeah. say, you know what, this is still phenomenal growth. AI still come. Now, we're seeing some backing off and spending in AI because companies can't figure out what to do with it. Yeah. They just knew initially. Well, they can't figure out how to either. make money on it. Right, right. And remember I'm, I'm remember Monday, you, Monday we talked about, the, about the, which I coined, and by the way, if, if you guys do this again, you got to give me a little credit, was the Jensen Wong Smile Index, that he is everywhere smiling. He popped it on Squawk Box. The bad news is, Joe, we got a month to wait for NVIDIA's earnings over a month, Tuesday, November 19th. What's your take on everything you just said? So you have about 10 days before we begin to hear from the MAG-7. I believe it's Microsoft and Alphabet Alphabet that will begin the MAG-7 reporting season the week of October 28th. So I don't think the markets can ignore a significant miss uh, from from. The MAG-7, mm-hmm. I think it would rattle markets. Now, keep in mind, Alphabet missed in July and market was able to steady itself and, and work forward from there. Um, but, but I think it's important that the MAG-7 don't have a significant miss. A while ago, we spoke about NVIDIA, and you had said that it would some, be something that you held for years. And ever since then, you held it for a while, but more recently, you have been selling it off. 
how much do you have left of it and why have you been selling? Can you see yourself getting back into it again? I've made so many mistakes in my investment career. One of them was I sold all my NVIDIA, um, probably in somewhere between 800 and 950. I think it's 1300 on that stock now. You own none today. I own none, and I, I own none the last 400 points. It was a big mistake. Uh, in terms of AI, and by the way, when I, when I saw you at that conference, which was 18 months ago, I fully expected to own it for years, but I think it was 300 and change. And um, as I also said at, at a media interview, I'm not Warren Buffett, so I thought, I thought I was going to, but what changed is, is it tripled in a year, and I, I thought the valuation was rich. We are big term, long term believers in AI, and there's still many ways we're playing AI, particularly the infrastructure that's been built out to support the power needed. Uh, and yes, I think NVIDIA is a wonderful company, and where the price to come down, we get involved again. But right now, I'm licking my wounds from a bad sale there. <laughs> you know, I love your chart inside the rack, right? So inside the rack, you break it down for everyone. What's in, and then outside the rack, manufacturing equipment. This is the ASML, uh, KLL ten cores there, uh, Lamb Research, uh, and of course uh, applied uh, uh, applied materials. Those stocks crushed. I mean, absolutely hammered yesterday and today. I guess this is an area you would stay away from anyway. That's right, Charles. So I think. If you want to benefit from the data center investment cycle, you want to stick inside the rack. And inside some, the rack. Exactly. And some tangential plays on the energy side, because this is where processors are a big area. Right. Networking is a big area. So those are really the areas where money is spent today. Over time, if you look over the next 10 years, we will need more equipment as well. But not right now. But not right now. All right. So, of course, we're talking NVIDIA inside the rack. I'm a little curious about AMD. Down 9% in the last five days, the worst performer in technology. Is something going on there? Because it feels like there's a constant tug of war between AMD and NVIDIA. Are they catching up? Will they be able to be able to compete? So people were a little bit disappointed by their AI event where they didn't really reveal any, any new data points. But I would point to people, the stronger Blackwell orders are, and the CEO made a comment that now Blackwell is sold out. Right. The stronger they are, the better the setup for AMD. So it, the setup here is pretty favorable. There are some question marks, though, around whether you can get the same utilization from their chip as you would from the Blackwell because it comes with a lot of free so speaking libraries. speaking of Blackwell orders, they're coming in big time, right? I mean, you see the same names that the hyperscalers are there, the Microsofts of the world, and, and, and they're buying. And, they're, and so you're confident about the Blackwell. You're, you're still confident about NVIDIA. You, uh, you, you did, I want to switch gears because we're going to run out of time. But I saw in your note that you shares of NVIDIA climbing today, recovering from yesterday's broader chip sell off on the heels of a disappointing earnings leak from ASML. That stock still sinking today. Uh, NVIDIA also getting hit with news that the DOJ is considering capping AI chip exports to some countries. Joining me now to discuss all this is Bernstein Research's Stacey Raskon. Stacey, it, it's good to have you here. It always sounds like there's a ton going on around NVIDIA. Always, and certainly, always. certainly there is, uh, not to mention we have, you know, Jensen is, is really you know, on the circuit out there, kind of mm. preaching uh, the future uh, at every turn as well. And yet the stocks, you know, it's up seven tenths of a percent this week. It's kind of hanging in there onto this gain. So separate out what matters and what might not for, for this one. Yeah, yeah, you bet. So yesterday took a hit along with the rest of the sector on, on two things. One was the um, the ASML uh, earnings leak, which was interesting in its own right, and um, some of the export control news. Um, I think any hit that it took on the ASML uh, report was probably not really justified because, well, ASML's report, as we all know now, was not great. The one sort of bright spot from it was AI demand. It seems like AI demand is still off the charts. It's about the only thing that is, but it's still very strong. And, and clearly like that, that benefits uh, NVIDIA. Um, I do wonder if, if some of the hit yesterday was more around some of the export control stuff. And, and what's going on there is there were some stories that suggest the U.S. is considering, I guess they suggested capping the licenses um, that NVIDIA and, and other AI chip vendors can use to sell parts to other countries, particularly, I guess, in this case, the, the Middle East. Um, I'd say, it, it, and though I'm not sure it's that big of a deal, I guess we'll see, but caps, in my opinion, are not bans. Um, they already have license, they're already under licensing arrangements with the Middle East. They have to get licenses to ship there anyways. And, and frankly, the other like outright bans that we've seen in the past haven't really slowed them down at all. And I so I, I'm not terribly worried about, about that. They seem to be more 
um, incremental than anything else. Um, and, and we saw the stock yesterday was coming down before the ASML. They dropped sharply and then kind of recovered a, a little bit uh, afterwards. And so I think today it's kind of relaxing a little bit as it's clear that the ASML news is not a direct read across and, and maybe the, the export control stuff isn't as big of a deal as people might have been worried um, uh, at first. Yeah, and the market clearly, as you suggest, making its peace with whatever all this is. And I, I know there's a way also of saying, listen, this stock is where it traded four months ago. It had an absolutely massive run. It gets to $3.3 trillion market cap. And then maybe it needs to kind of hang out for a little while and figure out exactly how long we're going to be in this lucky position of demand outracing supply uh, into yeah. next year. So where do you think that sits in terms of investor expectations and, and how the stock is, is positioned? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You sort of look at the last couple of months, it was in a lot, a lot of news flow. The stock took a big hit um, several months ago on, on the Blackwell delay rumors. And right. while it does right. seem that there were some issues there, it really looks like they've worked through it without any problems, right? So it didn't really have any impact on, on the demand trajectory. Um, and I'd say since you know, the stock was, I went to 90 bucks or something like close to it. And so it, it certainly recovered off of off of that. I guess that was a great entry point in, in hindsight. And look, going forward, I mean, all of the checks on, on AI demand, like I said, they're, they're going to sell everything that they can make. And, and you mentioned Jensen's out there. I think he's been on your on your, uh, on your channel more than once sure. um, yeah. in recent weeks and sounding very enthusiastic. It, it's it's the one bright spot in, in, in the whole semiconductor arena right now. It, it's, it's the one thing where we can definitively point and say demand is probably going to exceed expectations, even expectations that I think are, are, are going up now. Some of the other areas and semis, um, I, I wish you could say that. You can't really say that right no, now. No, for sure. All right, I hope you're all doing great today. The S&P finished about four tenths of a percent higher today. And NVIDIA finished the day up about 3.1%. We have a lot to discuss about NVIDIA. Very early tomorrow morning at 2 a.m. Eastern time, we get Taiwan's semiconductor earnings. Remember that NVIDIA designs chips and TSMC is the company that actually manufactures those chips. This earnings report will be very important for NVIDIA and for semiconductors as a whole. I went through TSMC's monthly revenue reports, converted their reported revenue from new Taiwan dollars to U.S. dollars. And I noticed something very interesting. Based on TSMC's monthly revenue reports for this quarter, we can expect TSMC's Q3 revenue to come in somewhere around 23.59 billion US dollars. TSMC's revenue may be just slightly lower than that amount, but that is roughly the amount we're looking at for the quarter. If my calculations are correct, then we should be looking at quarter over quarter revenue growth of roughly 11.3%, which is higher than last quarter's increase. Of course, I do not know what the future holds, but I am optimistic about TSMC earnings tomorrow. I think TSMC is likely to report a great quarter, and I think their earnings report is likely to show signs of revenue acceleration. This is very good news for NVIDIA. Now I'll be honest, even if TSMC's earnings are good, I cannot guarantee how Wall Street will react to their earnings in the short term. That is something that I have no control over. But based on what I'm seeing from TSMC's monthly revenue reports, I think they are likely to report a great quarter tomorrow with signs of revenue growth acceleration. And if that is the case, then that is very good news for NVIDIA. After we get past TSMC's earnings tomorrow, the next event I'm looking forward to is NVIDIA's next AI summit in Mumbai, which is scheduled for October 23rd through the 25th. And this time Jensen is scheduled to speak on October 24th. So be sure to mark your calendars for that. NVIDIA stock reacted very positively to NVIDIA's last AI summit earlier this month. And starting next week, we start to get mega cap tech earnings. We get Tesla on the 23rd, Amazon on the 28th, Alphabet on the 29th, and both Microsoft and Meta on October 30th. These are all very important earnings for NVIDIA because these are NVIDIA's largest customers. Now here's the dilemma in the short term. If these companies report that they are increasing their CapEx spending then, that is very good news for NVIDIA. However, if they report that they are increasing CapEx spending, but also report that they are not yet seeing a substantial return on their AI investments, then that could spook Wall Street in the short term, causing a sell-off that would by extension weigh down on NVIDIA in the short term. So that is the dilemma in the short term. But from a long-term perspective, if the hyperscalers report that they are increasing CapEx spending then, that is good news for NVIDIA. We will have to wait and see what these companies' earnings are and go from there. I would not be surprised to see increased market volatility in the last week of October. I'm not going to belabor this next point because I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I want to very briefly remind you that I am personally cautious about adding to positions in this market until November 1st. This is because of the pattern the market followed back in 2016 and 2020. Back then, the market traded lower in the second half of October, reaching a relative low on the Friday before the election. This year, that would be November 1st. So I am cautious in the short term just in case. Here's the thing, though. During both of the last election cycles, the market traded noticeably higher during the actual week of the election and rallied into year end. So if we get a dip between now and November 1st, I think that could potentially be a buying opportunity. At least that's what I'm thinking right now. So those are my short-term thoughts about NVIDIA and the rest of the market. Now looking at NVIDIA from a long-term perspective, I am very bullish on the future of NVIDIA.
NVIDIA. I genuinely would not be surprised if this company doubles over the next two years given NVIDIA's current growth trajectory and upcoming product cycles. We have confirmation that multiple NVIDIA customers are already receiving shipments of Blackwell, which is very good news. This means we should see some Blackwell revenue show up in NVIDIA's next earnings report, and NVIDIA is likely to increase their Q4 guidance for Blackwell revenue as well. We're currently expecting about $3 to $4 billion of Blackwell revenue in Q4. If NVIDIA guides Q4 Blackwell revenue noticeably higher than 3 to $4 billion, then I think the stock likely trades higher on that news. So in the short term, I'm cautious about this market just in case. If we get a dip right before the week of the election, then I would likely use that as a buying opportunity. I think the market is likely to trade higher during the week of the election as long as nothing unexpected is happening in the world at that time. And I am bullish on the long-term future of NVIDIA. As long as things remain peaceful in the Pacific, and as long as none of the hyperscalers significantly reduce their capex spending on AI, then I think NVIDIA should be just fine for at least the next one to two years. At least that's how I view the situation. With all of that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of the day, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts about NVIDIA in the comments below. Please leave a like on this video so more people will see it. And while you're down there, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.